Power stations are all the rage these days, so I bought one to power my styling kit and I learned a few things along the way and in this video I'll share some of the things that I learned that may help you if you're planning to buy your own power station. So let's get into it. Now with lots of power stations to choose from on the market, how do you know the right power station for you? Ideally, you'd simply calculate the wattage of your appliances and how long you'd want them to run for, right? Wrong. Now, there are plenty of factors to look at, but firstly, you need to wade through the thousands of poor quality power stations that are on the market. One way of avoiding this is to buy a power station from a reputable brand like Blue Yeti or Anchor, but those do not come cheap. There are also other decent mid-range brands out there, but sadly, the one that I bought is not one of them. In the box, you get the instruction manual, the charging brick, and the power station itself. Now, this power station is rated for 600 watts, and on paper, it was enough to power some of my appliances, including the Starling kit, which requires on average 40 watts of power, a 100 watt TV, and a 15 watt Android TV box and here and there, a PC, which is around 300 watts. Except it could not power all these, despite having a 500 watt hour rating. You know why? Because it is in fact a 300 watt power station. Yes, you heard right. A 300 watt power station instead of 600. Now, don't let the labels fool you. In many instances, when you're buying a power station, especially the cheaper ones, you will not be getting the power that is being advertised. Another thing to look at are the charging times and the options. This Core Echo power station takes exactly 6 hours to fully charge from empty using a wall outlet. You can also charge it using a solar panel which comes included with this unit by the way. Let me just say you will not be able to charge the power station to full using the solar panel is just not powerful enough. Now in case you're thinking of getting maybe another solar panel that is a higher wattage you may end up regretting that decision. Most of these cheap solar power stations are not able to cope with high wattage. So you may end up destroying your own power station. Now, in terms of charging times, when it comes to the more expensive power stations like the anchors, you may notice that the charging times are less than the cheaper power stations. Now, in terms of daily usage, uh, this power station, which I'm using, does what it says on the box but for the most part you should be prepared for the fan noises with continuous use the fans on the power station start running at a high speed at first it's at longer intervals then with continued use they end up going off every 30 seconds now that can get annoying but with this particular power station, even the charging brick has a fan included and the fan runs continuously when you start charging it. So if you're living in a one room, you may not be able to sleep when you're charging this particular power station. Now, I'm not sure what causes this, but what I've observed is that when I'm using this power station, the charging brick on the Starlink starts buzzing. Now, you may need to look to see if the voltage of your power station is enough for your appliances. The user interface on this particular unit does have much going on there. There is the on and off button. You click the USB button when you want to power items like phones, etc. When you want to use the plugs, you press the AC button. Sadly, this model does not display the amount of watts being used at a time. I have a feeling they do it deliberately to hide the capacity of the power station. The LED button is used to power the LED light inbuilt into the power station. The light has three modes to choose from. The battery indicator does not show the exact battery percentage, which is not ideal, but then it's not critical as well. Now with more expensive power station, you get to see the wattage of your appliances. And in most instances, some of them even come with mobile apps. Now in terms of the battery inside, this particular unit comes with a lithium phosphate battery. There are also other power stations on the market that use gel batteries. Now, power stations that come with lithium batteries tend to have more charging cycles. 
as opposed to power stations that utilize gel batteries. Which explains why most power stations with lithium batteries are more expensive than the ones which have gel batteries. So if you want to have your power station for a long time, you need to invest in a lithium powered power station. With this Coreco power station, I get about 8 hours of use on a full charge, powering only my Starlink kit which is on average 40 watts of power. Now I attempted to power my TV, my Starlink kit, my Android TV box to see how this power station can handle it and I was disappointed. I managed to get only 10 minutes of use from 75% of battery in the power station. Hence why I'm saying the capacity that is being advertised is not the capacity that you get. So this is something to look out for when it comes to power stations. So if you're planning to get a power station to power a bunch of appliances, you will be disappointed unless you buy maybe a 2000 watt power station, which will probably be half of the capacity in realistic terms. Plus it will cost you an arm and a leg. Now in conclusion, power stations are one big scam if you ask me, but then you may get lucky. The only safest options you might have is just buying an expensive one and they tend to get expensive. For instance, an anchor can run you over $1,000 if it is a 1,200 watt power station. If you're not mobile, you may want to look at a home or office solution to avoid disappointments. Anyway, that is it guys. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.